Hi. The question that I've been asking myself recently is, how does God feel when I'm unfaithful to him? And what does being unfaithful look like anyway? I think firstly, it means not trusting God when I could. I use that word could deliberately, just by way of a personal example. During the summer, I developed atrial fibrillation. It was a bit of a shock to me and it made me think about my frailty and about what was important to me. My immediate reaction was to put my trust, my hope, in a cure or treatment. Trust the technology, the science and the skills that are available. That's a good thing to pursue. But it didn't release me from anxiety. I could have put my trust in God and I learned to do so leaning on the only certainty that there is, putting my trust in him for my eternal future and for the future welfare of my family. Often in my life, when I look back, I've chosen to trust my possessions, abilities, status, family, when I could have chosen God to put my trust in, been unfaithful. Secondly, I think being unfaithful is not walking in the way of Jesus. It's Jesus, the one whom I claim to love and to follow. As a community group, we've been following a series, looking at Jesus' life and incidents in his life through the lens of how they helped Peter become more like Christ. It's been challenging for me. I've learned that I don't pray about the important things in life like Jesus did that I don't resist temptation, like Jesus did. I don't proclaim the good news that is Jesus, like Jesus is. But I'm not as gentle and as kind to others as Jesus was. I'm often unfaithful in that sense. And the question is, how does God feel when I'm unfaithful to him? Well, I've been reading through Hosea recently. It's one of the prophets in the Old Testament. It's about unfaithfulness or faithfulness. Habitual adultery is used as a brutal illustration of the unfaithfulness of God's people. And in doing so, God tells us, tells me, how he feels when I'm unfaithful. In the midst of all this unfaithfulness, we can almost hear God say, in sigh in anguish, when he says these words. How can I give you up, E O Ephraim? How can I hand you over, O Israel? Here God tells us that he is so gripped by his love that despite their habitual faithfulness, God can't let his people go. So strong the grip of love, he can't let his people go. He can't see them destroyed. And then he goes on to add this and allows us to stare into, into his heart as he says, my heart recoils within me. My compassion grows warm and tender. There are words worth repeating. My heart recoils within me. My compassion grows warm and tender. The word recoil could be translated as churns. God says my heart turns over, it churns. My compassion stirs, he feels it. If it was happening to us, perhaps the words we'd use is that our hearts are being broken. This is how God feels when we're unfaithful, gripped by his love, moved by his compassion. Now fortunately, Hosea's words and record of God's speaking doesn't end there. A few late verses later on he says this, I will not come in wrath. There's a hint there of what is to come. God in his son Jesus came in love. So that whenever I'm unfaithful, can be forgiven and our relationship restored, my relationship with God himself restored, so that I can learn to be faithful, to trust him, to live like Jesus lived, secure in God's love.